phase is a Eurorack format phaser module. It's 18 HP wide and available on a black or a silver front panel. It's based on possibly the best sounding phaser of all time, the Electroharmonic Smallstone. Originally designed to be used with guitars, it was made famous in the synth world by Jean-Michel Jarre. With the next phase, we've increased the original design from 4 stages to 12, and a number of stages can be selected with a rotary switch. The emphasis stage can be selected with a separate switch, so emphasis or resonance can be taken from a different phaser stage. For example, we could select it to be a 4 stage phaser, but take the emphasis from stage 11, which would generate a significantly different sound if the emphasis was also taken from stage 4. The many possible combinations of both phaser and emphasis stages give a huge variety of different phasing sounds. This is quite unique as generally phasers only offer single settings for each. To add even more variety to the phasing sounds, it also includes a colour control, along with CV control of frequency, emphasis and depth. And it includes an onboard LFO that can be used by the phaser or even used as a separate LFO to modulate other modules. It also has a two-channel audio mixer, so you can mix together two inputs and control the level on both. It can be used in a mono-in and mono-out configuration, or mono-in and stereo-out. This is the next phase module. On the back has a 10-pin power connector and below it, it will say minus 12 volt to tell you that these two bottom pins here have to be connected to the minus 12 volt rail on the bus board. So on the power cable, you'll notice you've got a 10 pin connector one end and 16 at the other end to connect to the bus board. So the red stripe has to correspond to those bottom two pins on both the module. And the minus 12 volt in the bus board itself, which is also at the bottom of these pins, so I'll connect the power cable first and then make sure the red stripe is also lined up on the module The two-channel mixer has separate level controls for both inputs. On the left over here I've got pink noise coming from the glide and noise module. And on the right I've got square wave coming from the VCO. So I can blend those together. Adding a bit of noise to the VCO gives the, the phaser something more to get its teeth into. The left output uses the stage switch for the phaser stage selection and the emphasis switch for the emphasis stage selection. So at the moment it'll just sound like a pretty normal phaser sound but if we leave the stage set at 4 and then change the emphasis stage to say 11 Then the left output's phaser stage is 4 and its emphasis stage is 11. This is particularly beneficial because having one set to an even value and the other one set to an odd value will put the two out of phase of each other. And the result of that will be a much more pronounced phasing effect. The right output differs in that it uses the emphasis stage switch to select both the emphasis stage and the phaser stage. As a result, the stage switch then becomes redundant, it won't do anything. But it will all be on the emphasis stage switch. As a result of this, with the two outputs being different, the left output being set at four stages in this case, and the emphasis stage is set at 11. But the right output 
both phaser and emphasis stage is set to 11. You can then take these to two separate VCAs like I've done here and create stereo effects. Color control will only work with the left output and it will allow you to make the sound either brighter or darker. But this also allows you to create more of a difference between the, the sound coming from both outputs. Depth control sets the wet versus the dry mix. Until all you get in is the input signal and no phasing at all. This can be controlled by CV, the depth CV input. So if I take square wave LFO and put this into DCV input. This then becomes an attenuator for the incoming CV. The wet output is a direct output from the stage switch itself, and it needs to be mixed back in with the original signal, ideally about 50-50, to give a phasing sound. The main purpose of the wet output is so that you can send the wet signal only to an effects processor and then mix it back into the original dry and unprocessed signal. To give an example of this, I've got the wet output from the next phase going into the fixed filter bank 914 and I've cherry picked some frequencies to, to boost and what you can hear now is just the result of running the next phase through the fixed filter bank. So if I introduce that dry signal to the mix and at the moment I've got them pan left and right in stereo but if I then reintroduce the effects of the phaser on the left output by increasing the depth or the mix between the dry signal and the process signal in the left output Use a colour control to darken that a little bit. We use a stage switch to select how many filter stages we want. And then we use the emphasis stage switch to select where the emphasis stage will be taken from. And this can be the same or different from the amount of phase stages that we have. Phaser emphasis is similar to the resonance control on a regular VCF in that you're feeding back some of the phase sounds back into the input. Each filter stage is inverting so if we select an even number of stages and an odd number of, of emphasis stages then the emphasis loop will be inverted which creates a different set of phase cancellations. The stages are actually individual all-pass filters and we can have up to 12 of these in series. They don't actually filter frequency which is why they're called all-pass. Their pass band covers the full audio range just like a VCF when it's fully open. Instead they rely on another characteristic of filters that is that the all-pass stage alters the phase of the signal by delaying it slightly and each stage adds further phase change to the signal. The amount of phase change, which is measured in degrees, will depend on the frequency of the audio signal being processed. And it's only when we mix this out-of-phase signal back in with the original untreated signal 
that we get the phase cancellations that create the familiar phasing sound. The depth control determines how much of the wet phase signal is mixed back with the original untreated signal and when this reaches about 50-50 we get the strongest phasing effect. The module has a colour control that's effective on the wet part of the mix only. It's situated just after the output of the stage control. Also it's only rooted to the left out. This also allows a larger range of stereo sounds as the right channel remains unaffected by the phase colour. The colour control further increases the range of different phasing sounds available. So as I increase the control you'll notice that the sound gets significantly brighter. emphasizing that white noise that I've got going into this input one. And then when I turn it into the minus values, it gets significantly darker. The internal LFO is normalised to the FCV input here and its attenuator. So the LFO on its own produces the familiar swooshing effect with its triangle wave waveform. But if I introduce a CV into the FCV1 input, it will cancel that or break the connection with it and replace it. So we we'll use this sample and hold module. And also, the SCV2 can be used simultaneously to FCV1. So if I take an envelope which is being triggered by the, the same clock as the, um, the sample and hold, essentially this LFO over here. Now FCV2 is bipolar. So if I start to increase its value, it will add envelope to the frequency control of the, the phaser. Then if I go into the, the negative values, it will start to add an inverted envelope to the frequency of the phaser. But I can mix these together because they both function simultaneously. So I'll add the sample and hold and a bit of envelope. Shorten the envelope time. And speed up the clock. and I'll invert the envelope and experiment with a frequency There's also an output for the next phase's internal LFO so that could be used as just another simple LFO to modulate another module. But it could also be used if you want to modulate another module in unison with the next phase itself. One useful scenario for this output would be if you had two phases and you wanted to use them in a real stereo in, stereo out configuration. So you'd have both phases set up with the same settings the output of each pan to left and right through separate VCAs. Then using the LFO from one of the modules as the source modulation and taking its output to the other phaser and adding it to the FCV2 input. 
I've got the sawtooth output from two VCOs going into separate phases and then the output of the two phases go into separate VCAs then into an audio interface and then panned hard left and right I also mixed in some noise into the into both of the phases just to bring out the phasing effect a little bit more I'll set one of these VCOs an octave up so you can hear it a bit more distinctly from the, the other one this is just the dry signal you're hearing at the moment but if I raise the depth or the mix between the phased signal and the the dry signal on the first phaser and then on the second phaser now you can hear that the speed is different on both because they're both running on their own both running on their own LFOs so the rate on this one is slightly slower but if I take the LFO out from the first phaser first of all we'll turn the internal LFO down on the second phaser plug that first LFO into the second phaser and now you can hear that they're in sync with each other because it's no longer listening to its internal LFO because I've turned this down but it's listening to SCV2 and because I've got it set at a negative value it's inverting the LFO signal that's coming from the first phaser and the result of that is that the frequency of this phaser is always at the opposite position to this one and that gives that position of the sound being passed from left to right and because they're both now operated by the LFO on this phaser I can change the speed of both
Thank you.